It is week 14 in the NFL, and I am happy to report that your boy is on a heater. Uh, only one college game that matters this weekend, as the eyes of the nation, that's right, Steve, the nation, turn to the battle for the Commonwealth Cup. The nation. Cup. The nation. The world. They're watching the Commonwealth Cup in Bangkok. <laughs> they get the ACC network there. They sure do. They're watching it there, all right? And uh, the monolith is a tough act to follow. <laughs> we'll see who steps up to anchor the joint bank account this week. Let's get it going. Hey, y'all, I'm Chris Long. This is the Greenlight Gambling Show presented by DraftKings. And as always, I'm joined by Stanford Steve. How are we doing, bro? Excellent, excellent, excellent. Let's get after it. There is a sense of energy there is. and a sense of urgency it. from the host that I love, and let's get to it, dude. It is, it is, it's hate week. You know, it is. Well, I'm not doing the hate thing this week. I've been on record a few times. I'm not going to be a hateful person. There's all types of crazy shit going on in the world, but I do want to kick mm-hmm. your fucking ass, Virginia Tech, because I never could do it on the field. I want to, I want to watch you get your ass kicked. Okay, zero and four right here. All right. But hey, we we got the Commonwealth Oof. Cup now for a year. I'm feeling like two in a row would be a good sign. Um, so how do you do feel they, about do it? Do they treat it? Did they treat it like the Stanley Cup and give it to all the alumni that didn't get to beat Tech and they right. get it for a day and like they could drink it out of it? <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> I'm waiting for it. I, I, I must. You be, wouldn't know what to do with it. I, I, I must be way down the line. If they to give <laughs> if they to give it to me like that night for like an hour, it would have got ugly because that night. You would have thought we were out there playing. I mean, there was a lot of release in that in that evening. You know what I mean? I love it. What love you, it. What do you think? Of, it, what do you think it. about that as a little bonus here? I think uh, we're getting three around a field goal. I mean, listen. Uh, we talked about Virginia Tech a couple weeks ago when I gave Clemson, um, or was it last week? Yeah, felt yeah, like, it was last felt week. Like I mean, it was last week. I thought BC was a good matchup for you guys. You guys smoked them. Uh, put up forty plus. People thought and, BC was going to kick our ass. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, when you guys look at the Hokies and the Wahoo Waz, I mean, they're going yeah, opposite this. directions. We're doing this, baby. yeah. We're doing so, this. yeah. And you're catching points, Cam Jordan. Um, yeah, no, uh, we're catching. Just don't points. let 36 throw it to 99 and 99 throw it back to 36. You know the deal. You know the deal. Leave that play. So yeah, actually, uh, a quick, quick uh, deal on a um, on a way to make some good money because it's going to happen this weekend. The Who's get an interception. And pick up a fumble. That's it. That's all they got to do, guys. That's it. The odds there were plus 350. But Can they recover their own fumble? No, they got to recover somebody <laughs> else's fumble. That's a, good, that's a good one. It wasn't as simple, but it's still pretty simple, guys. It's going to happen. We're going to get the ball on the ground. We're going to pick the ball off. The odds were plus 350. Because we're involved, because of the green light podcast boost, we're at plus 400. You like that, Steve? I will say, Chris, I think you've made it when you're giving out props on your alma mater's defense Damn, on your own podcast. I didn't think about that. I didn't there think you about go. that. Now you made it, and, you, and you're moving lines yeah. on the props. There we go. So, hey, they've been like I said, they've been playing well, man. That's a badass defense when they when they get after it, when they get it going. They're a big physical group. I like them this weekend. Go Hoos, right. baby. So last week I went three and zero. Oh, okay. I thought it was a typo. You went two and one. I went three and zero. Oh. Yep. And uh, and this is really stupid. After thirteen weeks and forty five picks, <laughs> I am twenty one twenty one and three. You are twenty two twenty two and one. Ain't that like life at the office on a good day? Just how Vegas drew it up. Okay, collect exactly. big, get be exactly. on their way. Uh, so NFL week thirteen, three picks apiece. Steve, you can go first, man. Chiefs, um, I love the spot. I love the matchup. Listen, I've talked every week. I feel like about the playoff uh, Dolphins possibly being in a playoff team. I've loved the improvement. I love what Flores has done, even behind the quarterback decision uh, when they've you know gone back and forth. We even talked about well, we, we like putting Fitzpatrick in to you know to try and close a win yeah. on the road in, in Denver a couple weeks back. Tua still uh, practicing light with that thumb, which I don't like at all. Listen, this is just more about the Super Bowl champs. 
all they've heard all week is how the last four wins they have won by less than a touchdown. Now they get the chance to go down nice warm weather in Florida and, you know, hear about how great Miami is this year. I like the chances of the, of the Chiefs and Mahomes and the toys he has to play with. Miami's been great. Yeah. Been really good defensively. But now, now we're going to see what you got defensively. If you can defend sideline to sideline with all those guys running deep too, and then Kelsey doing his thing in the middle. We're going to see how much pressure you can get on Mahomes. Exactly. You know, yeah. so that's, I mean, let's, I, Christian Wilkins, those guys have been phenomenal. I love them. Yeah. Uh, but I, give, me the, give me the Chiefs uh, minus the seven. Yeah, it's. It, I'm. I'm gonna stay away. Uh, but okay. if I had to go one way, it would probably be your way because it's just like a rookie quarterback um, against the defending champs. I think I saw ten and thirty-five. You know, mm-hmm. and this is a guy who's only been in half the season at this point. So, I mean, they've been hot. Get that. But at the same time, they look sluggish against Cincy last week. The first half, they can't sleepwalk against the Chiefs. And um, no, no. And you know, getting pressure. With four is how I would prefer to draw it up, playing him, mm-hmm. and I, you know, heat it up occasionally and be selective. But for God's sake, don't have your safety running from twenty yards deep at the snap of the football. I see that sometimes. I'm like, why even blitz him? Like, yeah. there's no point. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't like your chances just being ultra aggressive defensively against Pat Trick. So give me, uh, give me the Chiefs as well, but. Uh, that is not my first pick. My first pick is going to be the Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh uh, yeah, baby! I think this is just the time to to get them, man. Um, they got to be better on the ground. Okay. Uh, I think everybody's probably on the Bills, so that's a good sign. Um, and, yeah, after that performance. Yeah, I mean, but you just said it. I mean, different teams they're playing against, but the Chiefs have have played teams close lately. Uh, Broncos was a was a dogfight, you know. Um, Raiders down to the wire, that sort of thing. So. I think I think the Steelers can grow out of this, man. I really do. I think uh, I think this is the week they get it going. I think this is a Tomlin coach team knows when to elevate and knows when to turn it on, and this is the time to turn it on. And and also Josh Allen not as good uh, under Oof. pressure. So um, the the numbers back that up, uh, and they're going to get pressure on him. Look at T.J. Watt this weekend. I mean, he's going to wear people out. You look at what Joey Bosa did to those guys uh, a couple weeks ago in that group in in L.A. Uh, the heat is going to be turned up, and I like the uh, the Steelers. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go to one of the games I hope I don't have to watch. I'm just going to take the favorite and go with it, and it's Dallas. Um, you go back the other night, the Baltimore game. I thought they played well enough to win the game. Three brutal missed field goals. Yeah, they were all. Um, it just turns the whole thing around. I I, I thought Dalton was our, was good enough. Uh, Amari good. Gallup's been good. Zeke actually got going. Looked like, you know, a, a healthy Zeke. Right. Um, but I just, the Bengals, the Bengals had so many um, opportunities last week against Miami in a game where Miami didn't play well. Tua didn't make the right decisions in the red zone. Uh, some of the play calling by Miami in the red zone, I didn't yeah. like it all. And Cincinnati still couldn't get to double digits and you know get make it a game, right? Uh, you know, as we've seen a team like Jacksonville do. So right. I just feel like Dallas, you know, really wants you know they have they have some options they on offense more me. than Cincinnati. They surprised me. It's a huge if, but golly, if they could have stopped the run the other yeah. night. Uh, that was going to be uh, uh, like an ugly one down to the finish, and mm-hmm. you know they that like Dallas was hitting chunk plays all night. That yeah. was something pretty unexpected for me. Um, it looks like they. they and he's going back to Cincinnati. He's going to play well. Yeah, give me the Cowboys. There you go. Yeah. I like that. I didn't even think about that revenge game. <laughs> Can you classify that a revenge game as a revenge game? Maybe. Nothing like it's some, your show. You can make whatever rule yeah. you want. Cincinnati revenge. <laughs> Uh, nice. I'm going. I'm going indie, man. I I just think this is a spot down the stretch here where a physical defense uh, starts to show up, and you know you, you got T Y going last week. I feel excited about you know seeing that wide receiver core, giving Phil a little bit more to work with this juncture in the year. Early in the year, it was like, golly, Phil looks bad. He's got no weapons. Pittman comes on. The running backs are always involved in, in the pass game, um, and then. T.Y. has a great game last week against yeah. your, your Texans. Uh, acrobatic yep. catches on the sideline and, uh, and, and you know, a pick play touchdown early in the game. Like, this is a spot 
And it's not even just about the Colts, where I just think the rest of the year they get better and the Raiders kind of taper off a little bit. Last week, they were lucky to get out of there. They just barely beat a, uh, a winless team. And, you know, it was the call. <laughs> that's, that's all it was. Yeah. I, what, I'm yeah. watching the Raiders. You know, obviously, everybody talks about going to the Arrowhead and winning. You know, they got talked like they won again against the Chiefs in a game that they lost yeah, yeah. Uh, on a Sunday night situation. They get blasted in Atlanta. You talked about it. And at the yeah. Jets, like, to me, the lack of consistency doesn't make them a playoff team. And I could say the same thing about the Colts. It's really interesting to me, Rivers coming in with probably a better overall team that he's had in right. more years than not than when he was with the Chargers. So it's a, I don't want to say chess match, but it's, it's, I'm really interested to see Rivers uh, against a defense that's not good. Right. And right. the Colts, obviously, their defense gets talked about, you know, enough in the, in the versatility they have. So that's, that's, and the Raiders are this coming way. off. Two that's, a, that's the only game I really want to watch at four o'clock. Yeah. Um, and the, the, yeah, the four o'clock slate is brutal. You know what? Uh, Green Bay, Detroit, I think could, could get sneaky interesting, but I'm not ballsy enough to give Detroit Me, out. Me, I totally agree with you. Um, totally and, agree. And, and you know what? I want to see if Seattle can get it going. You know, I, I really want to see if they can get it going. They've been warned enough times now. Like, now it's like, this is a pattern. If you don't get it going against the Jets uh, and you don't kick their ass like you're supposed to this weekend, mm. that's a big red flag. I mean, we've had enough of them. Indy and Las Vegas, one more thing to think about. Uh, Vegas, those two East Coast trips. They're finally getting home, uh, yeah. but they got to be pretty worn out. I mean, they won that game, and they've probably been running on fumes of relief and, you know, happiness for a few days. But it didn't feel like, damn, we almost just lost to the Jets. You know, and that's what a team that you can trust this time of year feels like. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, no doubt. So, yeah, give me uh, give me, uh, give me, me the Colts. Who you got next? Uh, I'm going to go Vikings. Uh, I don't think this is going to be a popular pick. Um, it is not. We know what they've done the last two weeks in uh, – Overtime win Jacksonville, come from behind win Carolina, but they still have scored and they really haven't gotten much from Dalvin. And I know everybody's going to talk about Tom Brady off a bye here, but I really wonder what, I mean, I'm going off the top of my head. I don't have any math here. I don't have analytics. I don't have, um, I don't know. I just have my eyes and my perception. And it just feels like teams aren't the same coming sense, off buys man. this year. You got your spidey sense. I, I don't feel like teams have, have been great off a of bye this this year. And when I think about it, you you wonder what what are bye weeks like for for these guys this year. You can't go anywhere. Yeah, there's no relief. How much time can you practice? You can't be at the facility yeah. as long as you want to be. So in a I'm not saying Minnesota's gonna win the game, but I, I think they have the goods enough offensively to compete with Tampa, who's shown they have holes in their defense. And you know, Kurt, I, Mike Evans, I saw it in practice again. I mean that's a, that's a huge get for a guy where I I I like Zimmer as a defensive coordinator and when he's really got a good game plan it is it is money right um so I I, I still have that in my I'm a, you know I I do think Brady's going to be better than he has been yeah, coming he, off a of bye mean, he's but be. I expect a competitive game here like you know these are two yeah. playoff possible teams and you know. Going to Tampa, nice weather. Minnesota's got plenty of toys. Jefferson has been absolutely incredible right. as a rookie. And um, it's amazing how he's taken over since the Steelers have been – they lost the game, and now Jefferson's the best. Where Claypool it was, it felt to me all here. Yeah, month um, to month almost. like. Yeah. So uh, uh, I think I think Minnesota keeps it close. I'll take the, I'll take the points with the Vikings. Yeah, dude. Uh, I just feel like over the bye, if there's any team that could use it and probably approach it like, let's get some shit done here, this it was late. them, you know. And Kay. you know, I also know that Minnesota is not great. Um, they've given up a lot of big chunk plays in the passing game, and I mm -hmm. think if they can get in a little rhythm, uh, the Bucks that that is, uh, if they can get in a little rhythm and coming off that bye, they're gonna, they're going to feel good about themselves down the stretch. So I think they identify that. They work that side of it. I think it could be kind of sloppy. Tom might miss a few, but I really do think they're going to work on it, and I think they're going to eventually pull away. So, yeah. I'm going to go Seattle, man. I'm going to really? go Seattle. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. I'm gonna go Seattle. All right. I just checked it at the line of scrimmage. I, you know, I just did a Russell Wilson, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I want to give like 15 points. Uh, yeah, you are gonna after that performance, but. Seattle just doesn't play well against the NFC East. That's all it is. Because they eked one out against the uh, my Eagles as well. So they'll be better right. this week. Okay. Yeah. Give me. I Seattle. mean, listen. I, I, I just thinking of Seattle. I know everybody wants to, um, you know, take shots and and do that. It's gonna take it like a team built like Seattle. I have more. Tr- like, there's more of those in this league than there ever have been. Yep. And with him calling the shots, knowing you're going to have to outscore your opponent, like you said, they got to like turn it on here. Yep. Um, you know, get get everything out there and and let's go yeah, because and think about the, the what the Jets are dealing with too. I mean, like they exactly. just, they just fired yeah. the, they just fired yeah. the coordinator. Um, they they're probably just distraught and after a really deflating loss like that in the league, there's like a cloud over the locker room for a week. So that's like a. That's, that's a lot. I know you always talk about the flight homes. Yeah. That's a long flight out there for a game. Yep. Exactly. Long flight out there for a game, and <sighs> on top of it, you've been spending like that loss was a yelling loss in the locker room. Yes. Like quiet yes. and then yelling. That's like yep. anybody who's been in a football like locker room knows after a really bad loss, it's quiet and then somebody just starts freaking out, and that's probably what that loss was like for them. Um, you know, so. I just don't feel good about them going west. Um, okay. Okay. Let's go uh, college game of the week. All right. Uh, I am going to go with a pick that I normally don't do, and that's the Territorial Cup. It's Arizona State. Mm, it's Arizona. They both hate each other, mm-hmm. and the underdog always seems to cover hair. I'm going to give the points with Arizona State. Arizona has been as bad as you could be. Arizona has lost 11 games as a program going back to last year. They're obviously winless this year. Mm -hmm. They scored 13 points and 14 points their last two weeks out. Uh, I really think Herm is trying to get something out of this season, almost like a red shirt season because he's got a bomb recruiting class coming in next year and any kind of momentum he can get going. Listen, they played well enough to win last week against a, a UCLA team who has been a really pleasant surprise with my man, Chip Kelly. Yeah. And I think Arizona state just has the goods here a little ramp it up. They obviously have more talent. Arizona is just not there. Someone's on his way out the door. I know it's a rivalry game and the underdog usually, you know, covers, but I just, I feel more sustainability here with, with Herman and the Sun Devils. Dude, what's the perception of someone and how it ended up at Texas A&M? The what's his legacy there, I guess. Like, cause I don't, I didn't pay as much attention to him down there. And I, I was, I'm asking cause I forgot he was out West. Like, I do not watch the Pac-12 yeah. unless, like, I'm just, you know, chasing something, you know? <laughs> um, here's the deal. You can't take away what, what he did. Yeah. And what, what, I, what I talk about what he did is, you know, he'd had the Manziel years. He rode them to the, to the mountaintop. They turned it into a win over Nick Saban in Tuscaloosa. They turned it into um, monumental upgrades to a stadium and a fan base that is as good good as there is out there. Um, If you haven't been to college station, it's absolutely incredible. I went there the following year with, with Van Pelt and Rosillo when Manziel hosted them, they ended up losing a close game, but I mean, still it was, it was Manziel. It was Mike Evans. It was, I mean, that thing was as cranked up as you could be. And he did that. Someone, someone was the guy that had it there and got all the recruits. Now, when you talk about, I mean, they got the recruits. It's just, I mean, Miles Garrett's a pretty good player. Yeah. He went there. Yeah. You know, like mm-hmm. we're talking those guys, you know, Matthews the tackle. Um, and then you you look at it and it's was it getting complacent? He lost he lost Cliff Kingsbury after one year as his right. OC. Right. You know, developing talent, you know, when you get there four and five stars. Um, there's there's a lot of things. Um, but I, I don't those those people won't trade those years in for anything. Yeah, that's the first time I and ever you know to be there going into the SEC attention. and that whole thing. He uh, he's always been a good dude to me. And you know it was I don't want to say a throwaway hire, but like Rich Rod get got fired really late, and it was the year that someone got you know let go at A and M. So it was just like oh let's get A and M. I don't know how 
invested he was yeah. um, taking it over. But to see, uh, you know, it's, it, it, I don't want downgrades and not, but like it wasn't on the same, the A&M and Arizona job are not no, on the same not the level. Same thing. So, you know, you're going to a new conference. I, I, complacency isn't the right word, but you know what I mean when I'm yeah. saying, you know, yeah, it's, he it's, thought he was, I mean, he built up Houston. Houston yeah. was great when he was there. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, all, and, and you know what I love about him? All his former players love him. Yeah. That's, no one a good, says that's a good barometer. No one says a bad word in about it. In a big him. way. If yeah. that's the biggest yes. barometer, you could, yeah, that's a, that's why everybody loves my man, Al Grow. Anybody you talk to, all his, all his boys that played for him in college, Jets. he's still tight with him. Well, I didn't play for him in the pros, but I played for him in college, and all like yeah. he still comes back in town 15, 20 days. He's not paying for a drink. No, we take him to Dirty Nelly's <laughs> down here, and, and he, he hits up a little group text every time he comes to town, and dudes are psyched to come see him. Awesome. And these are dudes that might not have played a lot, you know, like just he treated everybody good, so... Um, That's awesome. All right, joint bank account. And because we don't throw away money here, I'm going to take the Lions money line uh, on my leg. Just because, man. Just because it's Christmas almost. I don't know. Maybe something something good will happen. Bevel's the coach. He's undefeated as a Lions coach. Bevel's never lost as a Lions head coach. Never know. From Wisconsin. There's a lot of storylines. A lot of, lot of stuff going on. So I think maybe the Lions, man. Money line. I'm gonna go. I promise you, I don't give uh, out all my picks as thoughtlessly as that one. There's not a good. There's not a good dog this week to really hit you. Chris, sometimes you just don't overthink things. Yeah, and I think the Lions are gonna win this weekend, maybe. And I apologies, to Aaron Rodgers, who probably is gonna throw for 700 yards on him, but just in case. When Maryland plays Duke, who do you root for? Uh, in basketball. Yeah. Golly, that's funny. I really hate Maryland, man. <laughs> Because the fact that I'm thinking about this just tells you everything you need to know. Like, it doesn't matter what the answer is. I hate Maryland. Okay. Rutgers is playing Maryland this week in football. Maryland has done some things recruiting. They got some serious NFL guys on offense at skill positions, but I still think they're giving too many points. I will take Rutgers. I don't want the points. I want Rutgers' money line because mm. Shiano's going to keep chopping wood. The pick is in for the third leg of the joint bank account, and that is. Uh... Coming from my wife Meg, she she likes the Texans this weekend. I don't know if that's a if that's a personal thing, you know, over her brother in law or something, and she wants to get back at the the Bears, but she likes the Texans. That's who she picked. Go get it, Meg. Yeah, there we go. Bring Meg. it home. Yeah, let's go. We got this. So wow. by the way, I just heard this in my ear. The guest picker is now seven four and one. I don't think we are seven four and one. No, but we've always taken underdog money lines. Yeah, we're always doing that. We're trying to sure. boost the bank account. For sure, we are. I mean, we got. We're trying. So to- I hope Meg realizes the pressure that's on her. Yeah, she took the the you know the even Steven kind of boring bet. We've been we're trying to up, up the ante. Up the ante. That's what we're doing. Well, very good. That will do it. Uh, check out the regular Green Light podcast. Comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Be safe and have a great weekend, everybody. And go who's. Roll damn who's. If they win, I want a fake Commonwealth Cup behind you. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll make one. I'll, I'll yeah. have somebody. I'll go straight to a – you know what I'll do? I'm going to go I'm gonna go to a <laughs> welder and get one. Yeah. Made, a replica. There we go. And just troll the fuck out of tech fans. That'll Bingo. That's a bit. <laughs> <laughs>